Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Wellness Wednesday. Um, it is a lockdown edition brought to you by Marique Knight, um, our beautiful, amazing friend, mummy, and health coach. And she has got so much goodness for us today. If you've got any questions, put them in the chat box and we'll be uploading this to um, Facebook page, The Essentialists, soon. Um, but take it away, Marie. Thank you so much. Hey, ladies. Thanks for joining um, us. And thanks for taking the time to um, hear me speak. It's so cool that we can still catch up on Zoom, even though we can't all be together. So um, there's always a little silver lining, I suppose. Um, yeah, so thanks for the intro, Amy. Um, so I'm an integrative health coach, and I um, essentially help busy women to overcome anxiety and also just the general stress of life, um, get to their healthy weight, and most of all, just get the energy back because I personally burnt myself out in my old career as a TV producer in an advertising agency and it was absolutely awful. And you know, now it really means the world to me to help other women um, not go down that same path um, because fast forward a few years, you know, after getting continuous, continuous migraines, like constantly getting sick, just waking in the middle of the night all the time, thinking about my to-do list, my um, cycle was irregular, I just, yeah, I was just so, so stressed out. Um, fast forward a few years and honestly, I feel better than ever. So I just wanna share some of the simple things that um, we can do to just really, really improve our health. Because honestly, health doesn't have to be complicated, but sometimes it's just about getting back to the basics and taking the foundational things and doing them consistently. And this is what really moves the needle and takes your health from where it is now to where you want it to be. So those are some of the things I want to share today. But before I dive in, I'd, um, I just would like everyone to ponder a few questions. So if you've got a bit of paper there, that would be awesome. Um, if not, that's cool. But um, if you can't write down some answers now, I won't spend too long on it, but I really encourage you this week or just sometime later today to just really think about these few questions I'm going to ask you. So the first one is, um, what are kind of three things you'd like to work on or improve on in your own health? And I'll give you an example of one of mine. So this is something I always struggle with, and it's sugar. I've always had a sweet tooth, and it's, it's bloody annoying, <laughs> really. I blame my parents, because they've both got sweet, sweet teeth. Do you say sweet tooth, sweet teeth? <laughs> um, anyway, I, this year, had pretty much given up sugar, and I was so proud of myself. But come lockdown, I've completely fallen off the wagon. It's something I've always struggled with. So it's something I'm continually working on. So um, that's one of my examples. But yeah, just take a moment to quickly Good jot job. down those Good three job. things that kind of come to mind. Okay, I'm gonna move along, but please feel free to come back to this later um, because it's really important to kind of know where you're at with your own health and even just be aware of you know, what you need to work on, because awareness is such a big part of moving forward. So the next thing I'd love you all to think about is, what does optimal health look and feel like for you? I really want to emphasize the word feeling. So, um, you know, I'll give you an example again of, for me, it's about feeling calm and balanced, but also feeling strong and flexible, vibrant, happy, energetic, um, just kind of in love with life. Um, yeah, that's probably what, 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 it, what it would be like for me. And then the last thing I'd like you to think about is what feels out of balance? So what's your body saying no to? And don't overthink this, just this what first comes to mind and you can revisit it um, later today or this week if you, um, if you don't have enough time. Okay, 
So I'm going to move along now, but I hope you've all had a little moment to ponder those few questions. Um, yeah, so I'm going to share with you today some foundational things that will really move the needle and take your health from where it is now to where you want it to be. So I'm going to dive straight in because I've got a few to get through and um, I'm running on very little sleep because my toddler keeps waking at 2 a.m. at the moment. So um, I'm going to try not to take too long because I tend to waffle when I'm a bit sleepy, so bear with me. <laughs> I'll try and make it interesting because I know these health topics can sometimes be a little bit dry. So anyway, I'm going to start with the first one which is not very glamorous, it's actually not very sexy at all, and we all know how important it is, but it's about prioritizing sleep. And when I say prioritize sleep, I don't just mean, you know, getting some sleep, I actually mean going as far as getting to bed by 10 p.m. every night. Because honestly, sleep is so important. This is when the magic happens. This is when our body rests, repairs, restores. And if you can't repair your sleep and you're not getting good sleep, honestly, the body will have a very, very challenging time to get well and heal itself. It's that, that important. And the hours between 10 and 2 are the most key. This is when the deep healing happens. Um, it's when our body goes to the most work on those detoxification processes. And often why, if we've had a night out drinking, you'll find, you know, sometimes you wake and... and in the night around about 2 a.m. It's because your liver's working like double overtime to process all that alcohol. So um, it's, it's really, really important that we allow our body this time to heal, essentially. Um, we all know, we all have a sweet spot for how much sleep we need, but in general, everyone needs somewhere between seven to nine hours. But like I mentioned, it's that first part of the night that's so, so key. So um, what you want to be aiming for is getting to bed by 10 p.m. Because come 10 p.m., we actually get a little rise in cortisol. So that's often why you'll find, you know, you'll feel really sleepy and then you kind of push through it and then suddenly you get the second wind. That's actually that little rise in cortisol. So we really want to be making sure we get to bed before that happens. Um, because... Our bodies actually work on the rhythms of nature. We work around the cycles of the sun and the moon. And the only thing that's really changed us is electricity. But we're meant to be getting up when the sun comes up and winding down as the sun, you know, as the sun sets. This is, this is really, really important. Um, and the way our, our cortisol cycle actually works, it's at its absolute peak between 6 and 8 a.m., which is actually when the sun rises. So you want to really be up at this time because that's a beautiful time to be awake and making the most of this peak cortisol. And then through the day, it will slowly drop. And we'll have quite a significant little drop around 3.30, which is also the reason why we often kind of get that 3.30-itis or you feel like you need to reach for sugar and feeling a bit tired. That's usually that general, that little drop in cortisol. And then it keeps going down and it's at its absolute lowest at 9 p.m. at night. And that's why the time between 9 and 10 p.m. is the key time for our bodies to be going into that, that phase of sleep. It's, um, yeah, it will make all the, all the difference. <clears throat> um, but like I said, yeah, we're, we're, our bodies are in tune with the rhythms of nature. And honestly, electricity is the only thing that's really changed us, but our biology hasn't fundamentally changed. But as someone who's never been a great sleeper, I want to share with you um, my top tips to, that make all the difference to getting a really restful night's sleep. So the first one's super important, and it's about finishing dinner two to three hours before bed. Because our body actually needs this much time to process and digest the food before our head hits the pillow, so that when, it hits the, when, when we get into bed and we go to sleep, our body can go into that rest and repair mode. It's not, still not sending blood flow down to our digestive system. Um, if you do struggle with sleep, I would recommend taking like a good quality magnesium supplement. Um, or if you really can't switch off that mind, you might want to add in some melatonin in there. What I personally love to do and just do this absolutely every night is diffuse like um, lavender and also vetiver is another really amazing essential oil that helps you to stay asleep. So the combo of those two are just beautiful for helping you calm down and also to stay asleep at night. It's also important that you make sure your room's pitch black. And if you can't do this, I encourage you to wear an eye mask. Very, very important. Um, you also want to be making sure that you're winding down into sleep. Like if you think of a race car that's been racing all day and it pulls into that garage, you turn it off, you take the key out of the ignition, that engine is still going to be hot for some time. And our bodies are no different. We really need to allow them this time in the evenings to really wind down and to cool those jets before we just expect it to fall asleep. Um, you know, and so you can do this with anything that you like that makes you feel calm. So it might be like a yoga nidra or meditation or just reading before bed or listening to some music or hanging out with a loved one. Um, anything that just slows down your system and, you know, winds you down into sleep. 
Um, because if we don't fall asleep straight away, or if we are waking in the night, it's usually a sign that something's out of balance um, in the body. So yeah, quite important to, um, to address that. But there's so many ways you can do that. So yeah, um, you know, here are a few good tips. The other really important thing is exposing your eyes to light first thing in the morning. So if you can wake up, fling open the curtains, look at that lovely natural light, this will stop the production of melatonin, which is that lovely sweet sleep hormone, and um, kickstart your production of serotonin, which will help you wake up in the morning. Um, if you can't do this, especially which can be tricky in winter, I use something called a wake light, which is absolutely life-changing. I can't recommend it enough. Um, it's like an alarm clock, but it simulates natural daylight. So you sort of set it for your alarm time and it will slowly start getting light over sort of um, 20 to 40 minutes and tends to wake you up in the lightest part of your sleep cycle. So it's never very jarring. And then if you still haven't woken up by then, birds will start chirping at your alarm time. So it's absolutely fantastic. So um, highly recommend that if you're someone that does struggle with sleep. Also, if you find, you know, my alarm used to go off in the morning and I'd just be like so startled and it was an awful way to start the day. You know, you really don't want to be starting your day in like a, oh my God, I've got to get up and you've got an alarm beeping away at you. So yeah, awake light's fantastic. <coughs> So I'm talking so fast. Um, so, and on the contrary, in the evenings, we really want to be avoiding bright lights and blue lights and screens as much as possible. I'd say an hour to at least two hours before bed because exactly like I mentioned, um, if you're getting bright lights in your eyes, that production of melatonin is not going to happen. So if you find you need to work or you want to watch your favorite show or you want to go on your phone, Wear blue blockers, they, they just make such a difference um, to block out that blue light and just still, still help that production of melatonin. Because it's kind of like a seesaw. As your melatonin starts to increase in the evenings, your serotonin starts to drop. So that's also why you might find in the evenings you kind of can sometimes feel a bit scratchy or you might start feeling like kind of a, a bit nitpicky with a partner. That's usually just because you're having a drop of serotonin and your melatonin is rising. So Honestly, trust me, not a good time to have um, an argument about the dishwasher or finances with a partner because, yeah, because of the seesaw thing happening. So just be conscious of that. Um, uh, yeah, so uh, those are a few things, but honestly, create a sleep routine that works for you. We're all different. So find something you love that winds you down, that eases you into your sleep and make it um, a really nice ritual and get your oils in there because... It's just lovely. Like I just love walking into my bedroom and just having that smell of like lavender just wafting through the house. And you know, like even with little ones, now that I think of it, I'm so silly, I should have been putting the diffuser in her room this week. Um, but yeah, also really good for the little ones to, um, if they're like needing time to sort of wind down in the evenings, you know, lavender is just fantastic for that. So yeah, I know some of you probably thinking you're night owls. I hate to break it to you, but honestly, there's absolutely no such thing. Electricity is really what's changed this for us. Um, you would be going against your body's natural biology. And what I would say is honestly, if I went and took you and put you in nature um, without electricity, um, going camping totally in the wild, within one to two weeks, you would have completely reset your sleep cycle because there's no way you could stay up that late and then be woken up with the birds and the light at 6 a.m. every morning. It's, um, it's actually inevitable. Um, yeah, you can kind of see why now in like ancient cultures, they used to um, have like full moon parties and stuff because imagine how amazing it would have been to be able to see at night. Um, yeah. Well, that kind of makes me think of um, seeing some buckets at full moon parties in Thailand. But we won't go there, although it was fun at the time. <laughs> anyway, moving along. Um, my next point, which I'm probably going to say, these are all so super important. I feel like I'm always harping on about this one, but it's so essential that we're eating seven to nine serves of fruits and veggies every single day. And I know that sounds like a lot, but when you break it down into to your meals for the day, it's really only two to three serves per meal. And when I say serves, I just mean like, use your handful as a guide. And um, that's kind of what you want to be aiming for. Because honestly, no food nourishes the body more than plants. I mean, ask Miss Buffy this, she'll, um, <laughs> she'll set you straight. Um, but they just have everything we need in them. They're full of the lovely anti-cancer anti phytonutrients. They've got enzymes, prebiotics, um, full of vitamins and nutri nutrients, just the foundation of our, for what we need for our health, really, because essentially you become what you eat. So you, you need all these beautiful, lovely nutrients that plant foods offer us. Um, absolutely key. And if you look at it, most medicines in the world um, are, are originally made from plants and herbs. Um, 
you know, so let food be thy medicine. And I know all, what all the best diets in the world have in common is they're all 60 to 80% plant-based. And you just need to look at the blue zones for evidence of this. So they're like the longest living people living over 100 in good health. And they're all around the world. That's actually really fascinating if anyone wants to look into them. There's one in um, Japan and Sardinia and California. And they're actually 95% plant-based. But an interesting thing about them too is um, actually some of them still drink alcohol, which I found interesting, but they would never drink it in excess, but always with community. So again, bringing in that social aspect and acknowledging that it's not just about the food, but it's actually about that soul food and that community that also really contributes to our health and well-being. But yeah, they're really fascinating. So yeah, feel free to Google them if, um, if you're interested. But generally, it's just a return to common sense eating. So eating as close to nature as possible with as little human intervention as possible. And you want to be cutting out all the anti-nutrients and the liver loaders, the things like the trans fats and the sugars, um, the fried foods and the alcohol if you can, you know. Um, and just yeah, using common sense, really. And um, eating a rainbow. Um, and you honestly can't go too far wrong. What I always like to say is make vegetables the main affair. And then your protein is your garnish, your meat is your garnish, and you really can't go um, too far wrong. And I know um, Joe touched on this um, last week, but it's so important, instead of trying to restrict yourself of foods that you like to eat that you know aren't great for you, which we are, you know, God, we're all humans, so it's only natural that, you know, like for me, I reach for the sugar, and we all have our vices. Um, instead of trying to restrict yourself from these foods, a better way to approach it is crowd them out by adding in more of these good nutrients dense foods, more of the plant foods. And what you'll notice is your, your taste buds will actually change and it won't become difficult. There'll be a natural shift and it's a much easier approach to, um, to eating than trying to restrict yourself. So um, yeah, it's definitely something to try and you just need to get consistent at it. But yeah, ways to add in more veggies. So my absolute favorite way is starting the day with a smoothie. So um, I just think it's fantastic because you can just pack it full of goodness. You can sneak all those greens in there. It's really hydrating. It's gentle on your digestive system. Um, so just a fantastic way to get start the day with already so many plant foods in there. Um, it's also a good time to eat fruit because if you're worried about the sugar in fruit or, or eating a lot of fruit, you know, when we wake up in the morning, our blood sugar is low. So it's a really good time to introduce fruit into there. Um, also, you know, we all need around one to four cups of fruit per day. If you're concerned about the sugar content or losing weight or, you know, if you're, sorry, should we say that better? Um, if you're worried about um, eating too much fruit because you're trying to lose weight, just keep to the one cup per day um, and you'll be absolutely fine. But like I said in the morning, our body, our blood sugar is low, so we actually can have that, um, you know, that bit of sugar hit. But go for things like berries if you're worried about the sugar content. Anything where you can eat the skin and the seed is going to have a lower sugar content when it comes to fruit. Um, yeah, other ways is I just love wilting and steaming stuff. Super, super easy. Even if I'm feeling really lazy at lunch, I will literally pop on the kettle and wilt some spinach and add it to my lunch. Or um, Love steaming things, super easy. Uh, you can grate stuff like grating just a little bit of carrot or um, beetroot or anything, some, you know, steam some peas. Get creative and have ways where you can add in veggies or um, especially good if you're making things for dinner like some roast veggies, just make some extra and pop them aside and they're a great addition to a salad to give it a bit of, you know, substance and um, warmth and yumminess. Um, yeah, but lots of exciting ways and just always making sure that the vegetables are the main affair and any kind of protein is like a garnish on top of that. But yeah, so like I said, diversity is good. Um, Try to always eat locally, seasonally, or, and organic if you can. And if not, just use the Clean 15 and the Dirty Dozen as your guide. Um, yeah, they're really key. Um, I'm sure I probably don't need to explain those, but the Dirty Dozen are the um, conventional produce, which are the most highly sprayed, so we really want to avoid buying them conventionally if we can. So yeah, um, which kind of leads me to my next point, which is about helping your body detoxify. I'm just gonna take a little, little sip here. So yeah, helping your body detoxify, because it's actually an extremely scary truth when you, re when you realize you've been lied to for most of your life. Um, and us as humans, we're sold products and things that are actually unsafe for us, but corporations still go ahead and, and do this. 
Um, Sabin said that there and tested and researched that there are 77,000 plus man-made chemicals floating around in the environment. And we're all walking around with 212 or more of these toxins floating around in our fat cells, which is absolutely heartbreaking. Um, you know, many of these come from like our cookware, our water's got chlorine and fluoride in it, which just dis um, disturbs our gut microbiome. You know, there's pollution, our skincare, pesticides on our food, like the list goes on. And I probably don't now, I'm probably preaching to the choir here. But um, yeah, it's a, pr it's a pretty scary reality. So it's absolutely so important that we're helping our body to make sure it can detoxify and we can minimize these things as much as possible. Because in Ayurveda, which is, um, one of the oldest healthcare systems in the world, it's called the science of life and originated in India. They talk about the first sign of disease in the body is an accumulation. So an accumulation of too many toxins or too much bacteria or even too many trapped emotions. So we wanna just make sure that accumulation is not happening and that's where the detoxif detoxification comes in. Because when a man-made chemical um, enters your body, pretty much is like a foreign invader creating a warlike environment down there. So what happens is it triggers your immune system and that turns on and then inflammation sets in and it can wreak havoc in your system. So it's absolutely essential that we make sure we can minimize these toxins and where we can't, we're helping our body to actively detoxify them. So how do we do this? Well, firstly, like I mentioned, we want to avoid, the, avoid these chemicals wherever we can. So choosing safer cookware, safer skincare, safer cleaning products, which is just perfect because um, I know you already do this with your lovely doTERRA. So, um, you know, you're already using the lovely skincare options and different options, lovely cleaning options. So, again, I'm preaching to the choir here, but um, yeah, really lucky to have that on hand to be able to use those instead of the conventional stuff, and particularly with medications, because they're also liver loaders. So we want to make sure, you know, we're also decreasing the liver loaders, and medications fall into that category. So where we can use our oils, instead of turning to painkillers or, or other things, you know, other over-the-counter medications, is just going to be really beneficial for our health and also our children and our family. So really, really important. And then cutting down on those liver loaders, so like the sugar and the trans fats, the alcohol, even the caffeine, we really want to make sure our liver's not backed up so it has the capacity to really detox things when it needs to. And particularly for us as women, I think we're all women here. <laughs> um, sorry if there's any men in the group. Um, but also it's really important for us as women that we are detoxifying any excess estrogen that's floating around in our system. But when your liver is backed up, this can't happen because your body will recognize that, so it will recycle it. So another really, really important reason why we need to really prioritize detoxification. Because remember too, our skin absorbs absolutely everything. It goes straight to our bloodstream. It doesn't even, um, when it goes onto our skin, it doesn't, our digestive system doesn't even have a chance to have a go at it at first. And you only need to think of nicotine patches as crazy evidence of this, how powerful they are to stop someone smoking because they just go straight into the bloodstream. So we want to encourage our body's natural detoxification processes. And one of the best ways you can do this is by fasting. So absolutely everyone, and children included, should be fasting for 12 hours overnight, every night. So if you were to eat dinner at 7 p.m. at night, you shouldn't be eating again till 7 a.m. This is really, really important because when we fast, a process called autophagy happens. So autophagy only happens when we're not adding anything else into our body. And essentially what it does is it's this body's own system to go clean house. So your body will then go look for any damaged or detrimental or dodgy cells and literally destroy them. But this will only ever happen when nothing new is coming in. So it's that powerful for anti-aging and for disease. But they've actually said that fasting is the closest thing to drinking from the fountain of youth. So it's totally had me, had me sold. Um, yeah, can't recommend it enough. Because um, you can imagine if you never cleaned your house, imagine the buildup of muck and toxins um, that would just accumulate everywhere. But honestly, our bodies are no different. We really need to actively assist them in that detoxification process because there are too many toxins now in the world and it is a real challenge for our, our liver just to keep up with the load. So yeah, super, super important. What I will say though, 
as I'm really not a proponent, for, um, I'm not really not an advocate for, for consistently skipping breakfast as a means to fasting. Um, fasting always needs to be done in a calm state. And I'm pretty sure most of you are like me, but mornings are not a calm affair. Like usually you're rushing to get to either a gym class or get kids ready or um, beat the traffic or get to a meeting. So your body's already a little bit in a heightened state. So this is really not when you want to be fasting. And when we're in that state, our body will spike our cortisol, which will spike our blood sugar, and it then needs fuel. So you need to be giving it something nourishing instead. So, you know, like a smoothie is really good for that. And I'm sorry, ladies, but coffee doesn't cut it. That's only going to ramp your adrenaline up even more. But yeah, fasting is like, like anything with health, there's no one size fits all. So I would encourage everyone to do the, definitely the 12 hours overnight. And if you wanted to explore fasting a little bit deeper, work with someone who's experienced and knows what to do because all our body types are different. And um, as women, we just have to really be conscious of like things like fasting and like things like limiting our carbs or going too low carb because it can really throw off our thyroid and our hormones. So, you know, just something to be conscious of. I know for me personally, for my particular body type, I have to be really cautious with fasting. The first time I did an extended like two and a half day fast, I actually didn't get my period that month. It was just too much for my system. So just be conscious of that. And um, if you want to do the extended fasts and just work with someone or do your research just um, so that you know you're actually giving your body the benefits because remember when we do fast, you're actually putting that extra stress on your body. So it needs to be done in a calm state. Uh, yeah, some other great ways to help the detoxification process. So saunas are absolutely amazing. A um, little bit hard to do now, but maybe after lockdown, I'd encourage everyone if you can, if your gym has a sauna, is try get into a sauna weekly or even an infrared sauna. I know there's a few more popping up around Auckland. Fantastic to help your body sweat out toxins. Really, really powerful. Or one of my favorite things to do at home is a dry body brush. Um, so what this does is it stimulates, stimulates the lymphatic system, which is our body's main detox system. And um, it's really easy to do. You get, just get one of those dry body, dry body brushes and you always just brush towards your heart. And it's really nice. I, I do it before my shower every morning. It's almost like a little mini mini spa <laughs> but um, also exfoliates your skin which is really really lovely or well, if you don't want to do that you could try rebounding which is um, just jumping on one of those little trampolines although I always found that funny because I'm like who who has a little trampoline just hanging out in their house but you, if you didn't have a trampoline you could actually just jump on the spot and do um, do some little jumps and you're still gonna give your lymphatic system that boost it needs to kind of kick start and help that detoxification process um, Epsom salt baths is an, another, an Epsom salt bath is another lovely one, and actually something that you know might, might be nice to do now that you're at home a lot. Um, the sulfur in the Epsom salts um, helps the detoxification process, and also amazing to add again lovely oils in there and take that time for yourself to have a nice bath. Amping up your greens again, those plant foods super important, but particularly the brassica family of vegetables they really help with the detoxification process. So that's your things like your broccoli, your cauliflower, your kale, um, turnips, um, Brussels sprouts. Um, amazing to get those in. Um, they really help with the liver's detoxification processes. Also, you can start the day with a warm lemon water or um, you could even just take that lovely, the lemon essential oil and pop a few drops of that in it. Amazing way to start the day, opens your bile ducts, sparks your digestion and flushes out your system. So really, really powerful. And also if we, you know, after sleep, we are a bit dehydrated. So, you know, starting the day with that warm water is really fantastic. You can even pop a bit of sea salt in there so you get your electrolytes. Um, yeah, the combo of um, warm lemon water and sea salt is actually called like a natural Gatorade. It's that powerful to getting the mineral, the sodium and the potassium and those electrolytes. So a great thing to do too. And lastly, is to stop snacking. So um, we just want to make sure that we're, and we have three to four hours at an absolute minimum between meals. Like your body needs this much time to digest and process a meal before we're adding more food on top. Really, really important. Like a good analogy for this is imagine if you're cooking rice in a rice cooker and you're halfway through cooking that rice and then you go add more rice on top. That rice on top is not going to cook. Um, so yeah, just be reminded of that. Give your body that time to break down, process that food before you're adding more in. And then you can almost get like a little mini autophagy happening out throughout the day. 
Um, one of my absolute favorite ways, and I think personally one of the most powerful ways to help body with a deep detoxification is doing a functional medicine detox. Um, that it's kind of like a full body detoxification. It's going to those deeper layers. Um, happy to share info of the one I really like to do. It does include the two and a half days fasting. So it is, I'm not going to lie, it's, it's really hard. It was really hard to do the first time. I've probably done it four to five times now. But the benefits just far outweigh um, the challenge. I came out, I felt like my skin was clearer. I could see better. Um, my thinking was sharper. Like floaters in my vision that had gone, had less cellulite. It was just, it was, a, it was amazing. Like I can't recommend it enough. Most people do it for weight loss um, because you will lose weight. We, most of our, the toxins stored in our body are stored in our fat cells. So we're, often a lot of us are walking around with like a toxic water weight. So this will just help clear that. So it's really probably the fastest, healthiest, safest way to quickly lose some weight. So um, I can't re recommend enough. It's really, really life-changing. So I'm happy to share the one I like to do. Um, it's not quite the same as a juice, uh, juice or a cleanse because I know doTERRA have a lovely cleanse. I don't know enough about it. But the Functional Medicine Detox does work on lots of deeper layers. But also doing something like a cleanse, amazing. Like you're only going to get benefits. So yeah, that's something you could look into. I uh, believe it's from the US site. So maybe talk to one of the girls um, about how you get that. Uh, yeah, so that's detoxification. So um, on the other end of the scale, okay, so there's really two reasons why, oh, there's two, two ways we can get well. Firstly, we want to clear out the excess of toxins. And then we want to replace the deficiencies in our body, where our body's lacking. And honestly, getting well, it's, it's as simple as that. So once we've cleaned out these toxins, let's look at what's missing and let's make sure that we can replace that and give the body exactly what it needs. Um, and ideally we'd only do this with food, like I wish we really could, but sadly in the world we live today, our soil's depleted, fruit is picked, fruit and veggies are picked um, way too early, so they're not left to ripen on the vine or wherever they grow to get those, like, you know, those last important nutrients right before um, we eat them. Um, also the environment we live in, is, as I mentioned, is just full of toxins. And also our lifestyles. We live very busy um, lifestyles that are taxing on our bodies and deplete us much faster. So um, when, we, you know, we de when we don't have all the amino acids or the um, essential fatty acids or the vitamins and minerals that our body needs, it's much harder to buffer the stress, to buffer the viruses, and just for our body to function at an optimal level. So really, really important that we look at how we can, um, how we can replace these. So every, every system in our body needs certain minerals and vitamins and um, things to function. So you can think of it kind of like um, the cogs of a machine. If one stops turning because it doesn't get the oil or the nutrient that it needs, it's going to have a knock-on effect to other parts of the body and affect those too. So really, really key that we get those nutrients that we need. And that's where, you know, eating all those plant foods super, super important. Um, our things like our thyroid needs selenium and iodine to function properly. Our hormones need like omega-3s and B6 and B vitamins in general and vitamin D. Um, you know, everything needs something. So really, really important that at like a bare minimum, I would say absolutely everyone should be taking like a good quality activated multi to just fill in the gaps from your diet um, where you might not be getting everything in or, or you know, um, you're not getting all the nutrients because our soil is lacking in those nutrients. And then I'm going to quickly take you through the other absolutely key foundational supplements that I think everybody should be getting in. So we've got the good quality multivitamin. Then most people are deficient in omega-3. This is really, really important. So important for inflammation, important for our brain, important for our hormones, important for absolutely everything, really. Um, but unless you're eating sardine, mackerel, wild trout, um, wild salmon, three to four times a week, you won't be getting enough omega-3s. So um, I'm not saying you have to, if you're, if you're a vegan, there's lots of plenty of vegan sources, but this is an absolutely key one that everyone should be supplementing in. And along with that is also vitamin D. Most, most of us are deficient because we spend a lot of time indoors these days. And even when we are outdoors, we lather up in sunscreen or we wear clothes. So particularly in winter, we tend to be deficient a really, really important one to add in. And that's, it's really key for our bones and for our immunity and again for our hormones. So they're really essential supplements that everyone wants to be taking. Um, then there's probiotics. So these are a funny one. Like I do think everyone should be taking probiotics, 
But if you did suspect you had a gut issue or perhaps you're, you do have some bloating or if you maybe thought you had some candida or yeast, I'd encourage you to really work with a practitioner before you just throw probiotics at it. Because look, if you've tried probiotics already and they haven't solved your problem, they're probably not the answer. Because gut healing works, like gut healing is a process. It's a step-by-step -step process that needs to be done in a certain order. So um, you want to be careful with just adding probiotics in because different strains of probiotics populate different parts of the gut. Some populate the small intestine, some populate the large intestine. So again, it's about getting rid of any overgrowth and then slowly introducing in the correct order. So I'd encourage you to work with a practitioner if you did think you had gut issues or were experiencing heaps of bloating. But for everyone else, yes, definitely a good quality probiotic. Really fantastic to get in there. Um, another one which I um, have been taking for the last three months, which I also think is really key and most people should at least try and see how they feel on it is a digestive enzyme. So as we get older, um, our digestive enzymes start to decrease and also our ability to break down and digest food isn't as great. So what this does, it just helps with that process, helps to break everything down and also helps to absorb as many of the nutrients as possible. So I'd really encourage everyone to give them a go at least for say three months and see how you feel because I know with me I'm definitely not stopping on stopping these after the three months they've made such a difference to how I feel and also just how I feel after eating particularly if um, we were going out for a meal and I maybe didn't have so much control on what I was going to eat or what was there have one of these before and it's fantastic um, yeah just you just break down your food so well but I know supplements can be quite an, they, they are an extra cost and they do Add up. They are quite expensive. So um, another good option if you don't want to get the digestive enzyme, you could um, just add in ginger tea, like warm ginger tea before meals. It's going to spark that digestion and that stomach acid. So it's going to help you break down your food better. It's an, it's an amazing, great alternative. Or even apple, apple cider vinegar, although I just not quite as palatable. So um, yeah, I don't personally like it. Um, but yeah, you can kind of see why. Um, in Japanese cultures, when they eat sushi and raw fish, they would always have wasabi, ginger, and then drink green tea. Because they knew that by having the wasabi and ginger, it's going to aid their digestion. It's going to increase their stomach acid. So if there, were any, it was the, if there was anything nasty on that fish or any parasites, they were going to have the ability to have the stomach acid to just to smash it. Because they, just, they, you know, they knew that. And the same with the wasabi. It's going to add in that extra kick. And then they've got the green tea there, which aids digestion. So um, that's a lovely thing to, if you, I would never say drink water with, don't ever drink water with meals. Because that's got the pH of the water. Um, is going to dilute your stomach acid, which can lead to bloating. But if you did want to sip something at meals, um, ginger tea or green tea is a really good digestive aid. So I totally got off on a tangent there. So coming back, um, also greens blend. Um, I'd say add this in if it's affordable, but you want to be making sure you're getting seven to nine serves of fruits and veggies every day. If you are not, you should definitely be taking some kind of greens powder. Um, really, really important to just, again, fill in those gaps. And I know um, doTERRA do a lovely one, or also they have their lifelong um, vitality pack, which Hannah was talking about last week and said it's made such a difference to her and her blood results. Um, so I know that covers a lot of these key foundational supplements I've spoken about, and it's their top selling product, so they're obviously doing something right. So um, yeah, that'll, that'll cover your basis, so definitely look into that. So those are your kind of foundational, and then you can look at things like, obviously at the moment, he runs quite concerned about immunity, so you can add, have some add-ons like vitamin C, zinc, vitamin D3, which was already in there, um, and even melatonin, they're all proven to really help boost your immunity, so they're really key for that. Or, you know, if you're feeling a bit stressed or anxious, um, magnesium is amazing for that if you struggle with sleep. You know, um, again, B vitamins are amazing for energy and stress. Um, so you can add in where you need to on top of those. I would always encourage someone to run some functional medicine tests if you can. That'll tell you exactly what's going on in the body. Um, and, you, you know, you can get to the root cause and look at all your nutrient levels, see exactly what's going on in the gut. You can even see what's happening with your neurotransmitters. If someone's feeling a bit down in the dumps, um, it'll tell you exactly what's going on with your dopamine, your serotonin. So really, really powerful because then you can look at healing in a natural way instead of taking something like an antidepressant, which will solve your problem probably short term, but you're not addressing the root cause. So, yeah, another something interesting to explore. But, yeah, just remembering too with... Um, 
nutritional supplements, use them wisely. And also you need to replace your deficiencies for kind of three to four months to get that proper cell turnover. Um, because our body's always renewing, which is fantastic. So you can always get healthier. But the health of the new cells is only as good as the health of the cells before them. So we want to make sure our cells are as healthy as possible by giving them everything they need. But also acknowledging too that supplements are there purely to supplement the good nutrition and the good lifestyle choices. They shouldn't be replacing it. So um, there's something to be wary of. And lastly, um, please make sure you get in those foundational supplements before I, I've, I'm sucker for this, but adding in all the fun ones like the maca and the turmeric, which are all fantastic, don't get me wrong. But we need to look at, for example, with turmeric, it's amazing for inflammation. We need to look at why is there inflammation at the first, in the first place? And could it be just because we're lacking in zinc or some key nutrients in our body so it's not functioning properly? So spend your money on the foundational ones before you go and spend them on all the fun ones. Um, yeah, and that you'll just really notice the difference in your health. Cool, and taking me to my last point, so I hope I'm not speaking too fast. I feel like there's a lot to get through and I'm just powering through it. Um, okay, learning to breathe diaphragmatically. So stress is the thing that tips us over the edge with our health. It honestly affects every cell in our body. So it's so, so important that we manage our stress because it's inevitable. And we don't always have control on it. We, we don't have control of the stresses that's out there. Like we can see at the moment a prime example of this. You know. Stress is there, but what we can control is our response to it. So that's the most, most important thing. And the best and easiest way to do this is by, uh, through your breath. When we slow down our breath, it, can, it conveys to every single cell in our body that we're safe. And it switches us from the fight and flight mode into the rest, digest and repair mode, where we want to be spending most of our time. Really, really important that we're just ducking into fight and flight if we need to, but it's not, we're not constantly stressed. And if you can master this, if you can learn to breathe diaphragmatically, honestly, it's a game changer and it's so easy to do. So I'll try to do a quick demo, if everyone can see me. Um, but a really easy way, I think, to do it is putting one hand on your chest and one hand on your belly, so you can't see the hand on my belly. You just wanna breathe through your nose and just fill your body with that beautiful oxygen and feel that hand on your belly rise. And just keep breathing into that hand on your belly and feeling it rise and fall. And you have this hand on your chest so that you can feel that you're not breathing into your chest and you're moving from that shallow chest breathing, which we tend to do when we're a bit stressed, into that beautiful deep belly breathing. And just keep doing it until you just feel everything in your body slow down. And it's absolutely beautiful. And it just happens so, so quickly. A magic, easy way to do it. Um, and if you don't want to do that or you don't want to put your hand on your, your chest and your belly, you can even just make sure that your, your out breath is longer than your in breath. And that's, that's all you need to do. You know, if you're lying in bed and you can't go to sleep, just do that longer out breath and it will just calm and soothe absolutely everything down. But I also encourage you to seriously address the stress in your life. So ask yourself, you know, what are my main stresses? Um, am I on all the time? What is stimulating me day to day? Because our body is like, I don't know if anyone's been to that bodies exhibition and seen like the, the bodies, they're actually, you know, our nervous system is a bunch of connected wires. And if they're on for too long, for a certain amount of time, they will burn out. So we need to make sure we're cooling them down and we're not on all the time. Really, really, really important. Because your body is not messing up, it's geared to your survival. So we'll always prioritize your survival over things like digestion, immunity, even fertility. Like I know when I was really stressed in um, my old job, I, my cycle was so irregular because I was so stressed all the time and I was picking up every single bug and that was my body just going, gosh, we need to look after a survival. Those things, they're not important. We're not gonna worry about them. So it's that, that important that we really, really address stress. Because if we feel a threat, whether it's perceived or real, so you know, even if it's like an email from our boss or we're feeling stressed because we're running late, that sense of stress is no different from, from running from a tiger. Like it's all the same in our body. But you know, when you do see a deer running from a tiger, they run away and they're grazing and they're back to business once that chase is over and they're calm again. But unfortunately in today's life, 
that's not really happening. It's this constant stress that we're under that's causing us the problem because our bodies aren't coped to deal with it. So it's super important that we're making sure that we're feeling calm and doing this breathing as often as we can. And I honestly don't mean <clears throat> that's like going to yoga once a week. And I even mean it's not even just once a day doing something calming. I would say you need to at least three times a day make sure your body's in a calm state. So when you wake up in the morning, take five minutes or longer if you can to do some beautiful breathing or sit, just be mindful, sit with a lovely cup of tea or just do something that tells your system it's like calm and relaxed. And then again, in the middle of the day, if you can, go out for a walk in nature. Listen to I Absolutely Love Binaural Beats. If you haven't heard them, Google them. They're fantastic, just calming your nervous system. And in the evening again, winding down again, reminding your body it's safe, it's calm, it's not on alert. And if you can just space those through the day, you're guaranteeing that your body's just not on all the time, which is where we run into the issues and we, and we burn out. Um, yeah, so, you know, it's different for everyone what, what calms you down. So taking a walk in nature, listening to beautiful music, hanging out with loved ones, laughing with friends, just doing what really you love to do and makes you feel calm is honestly makes all the difference. And it doesn't have to be for a long time. Like even if you just have five minutes and you need to just go walk outside and get some fresh air, um, listen to some music, do it. It's so important. Or if you're at your desk and you you know, you, you just need that time. Just pop your headphones on and, and do some breathing and it will really just change your whole physiology. And I can't, I can't encourage you enough, but if you are feeling a bit stressed or burnt out, this is the time more than ever, you wanna be taking in more energy than you're expending. So what I always like to say um, to my clients is make a list, like two columns, make a list of all the things that are taking your energy in day-to-day -day life. So just day-to-day yeah, -day life in that week, all the things that take your energy. And then in the other column, you make a list of all the things that give you energy. And you can kind of quickly see where you're sitting. You want to be aiming for like a 12-12 balance. However, if you are a bit burnt out and stressed, you actually need to be taking in more energy than you're expending. This is where your column of bringing energy in needs to be way more than the other column of taking energy out, just so you can recalibrate your system. It's really, really important. And um, just being conscious too that stress isn't just physical and emotional, but we can also can have stress going, in our going on in our body in terms of gut-based issues or viruses. So they're, they're also really important to address because if you're, um, or even if you've got food sensitivities and you're eating food that's triggering your immune system, that's constant inflammation and immune response, immune response is happening in your body, which is internal stress. So um, really, really important. But, I won't go gut and digestion or a whole topic for another day. But what I will say is, if you can rebalance your nervous system and get your gut healthy, honestly, do those two things and you will be sailing past 100 in absolutely good health. Those two key things are really, really important to health. And if you're sometimes not sure where to start, pick one of those two. Usually I'd say gut health is a really, really good place to, to rebalance first. Um, and with stress, um, always make sure, get, make sure you get the quick win first. So get the good sleep, get the good nutrition, supplement with the magnesium and the B vitamins. Um, really, really key. Or, you know, um, there's also amazing herbs. Like talk to someone like Buffy to get some lovely um, herbs like ashwagandha and stuff to help you with that. Use your oils. Like for me, I love frankincense and I just ordered um, copaiba as well. Um, so I've always had a tendency towards anxiety, so I'm looking forward to trying that. Um, I've heard it's um, amazing from when Hannah spoke about it at her talk. But yeah, lavender too, just a beautiful oil to just make you feel calm and you can just diffuse it all day, you know, it's gorgeous. But yeah, once you get that quick win first with the sleep, the nutrition, the supplements where you need, you're gonna feel more up for doing the meditation, doing the gratitude practice, the journaling, the yoga, and all the lifestyle-based things, because you're gonna be in a better place and feel more up to doing that. So. Yeah, just remember to focus on those foundational things first. And lastly, please don't underestimate your own healing power. Honestly, the body has an amazing capacity to heal, given half the chance. Um, so please know you can get well and you will get well and don't let anyone tell you otherwise. The power that made the body heals the body and it's so, so powerful. So um, yeah, please just know that you can get well. If you've got stuff going on, it will happen. Often it's just about taking these small steps in the right direction consistently that bring about that beautiful lasting change. And also for, for me, I'm massive on the mind-body connection. So just also acknowledging that healing can happen from the heart. You know, sometimes we do hold on to emotions or 
we can get trapped emotions just stored in our body as kind of energy and they can manifest as physical things. So sometimes it's as simple as asking ourselves, you know, perhaps what we might need to let go of or, you know, something like that to just kind of release that. But again, that's probably another deep topic for another day. But um, just please know that you can get well and you will get well. Um, uh, yeah, so don't let anyone please tell you, tell you otherwise. And you know your body, body better than anyone. That's why I was asking those questions at the start. They're really, really powerful. If you can tune in and bring an awareness to your own health, you do hold the answers um, more than any doctor and more than any practitioner who can guide you, but you really know what's going on. So tune into that. Um, which kind of brings me to my last question is, think about all the points I've mentioned today and pick one thing that's resonated with you, just one that you can implement today and this week to, to really improve your health. Um, yeah, so think about that. <laughs> yeah, so that's kind of pretty much what I do. I just really, um, I'm really passionate, so I get quite excited. I'm really passionate about teaching women to really nourish and heal themselves um, because we all have that beautiful power, just sometimes we need to be guided in the right direction. Um, but yeah, please know there's no quick fix. It's again about these small steps. It's about doing things consistently that bring about the lasting change. And what's really important is getting to the root cause of the issues, not just addressing the symptoms and then rebalancing the body that way. Cool. <laughs> awesome. That was so, so good. Thank you so much. Um, I will stop the recording for a second and put this in the essentialists um, and I will link Marek into it. So if you have any extra questions, um, please keep in touch um, on the essentialists. I have a very, very special announcement to make. We have a new baby in our midst. Oh, yay! Hannah's had her little bubby. Um, so very excited. He's here safe and well after a very long, arduous, nearly two day um, labor. So Hannah um, is in Auckland Hospital and um, little Bubby's in Niku, but he's doing well. And um, yeah, we're so excited to have him in our team. Um, no name yet, but we'll keep you updated on the essentialists. Um, but I am going to put together a little care package for Hannah. Um, I've already taken her breakfast this morning because they were trying to feed her toast. Um, <laughs> so um, I will also post uh, do a little post in the essentialists um, if anybody would like to add to that. Um, and, you know, it's a bit funny because of the whole corona thing going on. So I felt like a criminal this morning smuggling food into the hospital. Um, but I can be the smuggler and the criminal if you guys want to um, <laughs> um, add to that, which would be really cool. So thank you guys so much all for joining. Um, and just keep in touch with the essentialists. It's so important that we all support each other, love on each other, um, answer each other's questions, etc. So yeah, it's been so cool. So good. And I loved that chat. It was so awesome. Oh, thank you. And sorry, I mean, to say if anyone has any questions, but yeah, if you want to put them in the group, I can answer them in there if that's easier, just in the Facebook group. Yeah, cool. And also I'll add, um, Marek's just updated her beautiful website. So if anybody wants to get in touch with her for one-on-one -on -one health coaching, um, then her details will be there in there as well. Um, and I really recommend... Um, getting a health coach um, because a lot of the time we know the things but there's it's so overwhelming all of the information that sometimes it's so good just to have somebody one-on-one -on -one that can really help guide you um, at specific to your needs and really understand um, what you have going on um, and coaches I mean I've been um, health coaching for years now and um, we see it all um, and we see very similar things come up for so many different patients, uh, clients, customers, which, whatever way you want to put it. Um, and it's so good to get an outsider's perspective on your own health because sometimes you get so caught up in it and so worried about things um, that it's really good to have an outsider, you know, um, that, can, that can help you through 
and, and see things more clearly and then come up with a really part, a really, you know, straight pathway to um, recovery and health rather than you trying all the different things and not feeling like you're getting anywhere. So yeah, I highly recommend, um, yeah, getting in touch with Marie if you have been struggling with things for a long time and not being able to sort of make any progress yourself. Um, and who wouldn't want to have a beautiful health coach like Marie to talk to? <laughs> um, and also, um, if you have any friends or family that um, have struggled with health for a long time, perhaps introduce them into our group as well. Um, I know that um, it, it's a real struggle and um, it can be it can be really taxing on your mental health if you've got something going on physically. Um, so if you've got anybody um, in your community that has been, you know, going to doctors and going to specialists and all of these things, perhaps um, putting them in touch with somebody like Marie would be really beneficial for them as well. Um, and she's got all of the skills and knowledge and passion to help them. So thank you so much, Marie, um, and everybody have an awesome day. And please um, send some love to Hannah and her bubby. And um, I'll put a little post in the essentialists on how you guys can contribute to um, to Hannah's little um, love fund as well. Cool. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much, Marie. Yeah. Thanks so much, Marie. It was amazing. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, it was thank great. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.